2014 MBCLA 250. Mercedes-Benz CLA uh, sport line with like the AMG sport package whatever they called it back then like the appearance package this is the entry-level Mercedes-Benz model or was at that time in North America um, you know they had tried before that with the with the C-class compressor in like the late 90s early 2000s and that was like this weird c-class coupe thing hatchback thing it was basically like a c-class sedan with like the end chopped off so needless to say it didn't sell very well so this was mercedes-benz going back into the entry-level market in north america with a whole new approach people in the u.s are only used to seeing mercedes-benz as a premium car so why do they need to even have an entry-level car if they've established this reputation this is an important segment for Mercedes-Benz to compete in because it allows them to have that brand loyalty and to establish that brand loyalty right from the early stages. And then who knows, if that person just starts balling out, they'll go up to E-Class and S-Class. Maybe they'll get a Maybach or an AMG GT. So it's, it's meant as like that aspirational car that people can afford and then get locked into the brand. When they launched the CLA in 2013, it had this super avant-garde interior and exterior styling uh it was the first car for mercedes to debut their new design language even before the s-class so when people saw this they're like whoa that's that's pretty sick that's pretty cool i wonder how much it costs how much does it cost Twenty nine thousand nine hundred bucks in 2013 us so for under 30k mercedes marketed a car that people thought looked cool inside and out you got a, it was relatively spacious, relatively practical. So of course people are gonna go in, go into the Mercedes showroom, be like, yo, I want this, I don't want that Civic, I don't want that Accord, give me this. We'll talk about what it's like today and then um, we'll talk about where that entry level line has taken them to now and uh, what you can expect from this car as a, as a used car. All right, so stay tuned. I think this interior looks really damn cool. Um, it has this floating screen right here in the middle, which back in 2013 wasn't super common, and we all know how popular and common that's gotten now. So this was definitely a game changer, definitely a visionary design. Um, and this being the sport package, you get this really nice leather wrapped steering wheel with, with deviated stitching on the inside and some nice sporty grips here. Um, a, a relatively high quality um, digital display in between the analog tack and speedometer. Speaking of those analog tack and speedometers, those look really cool too. Um, I think the silver and the white techs give a really sporty appearance. And overall this gauge cluster looks premium, sporty, and luxurious at the same time. And one of my favorite things about this particular model, I don't know if it was standard in all CLAs, I'm presuming it wasn't, but it has a, um, a panoramic moonroof. Not really a full panoramic moonroof, but it's a little bit more than a normal moonroof. It's like a moonroof and a half. Um, and the, the benefit of this is that it just lets a lot of natural light into the car. So it creates a nice airy atmosphere. It doesn't feel too dark or, or, or you know, congested inside the car. So I think that's awesome. And it's tinted. So you don't have to worry about sun glare into your eyes. How sick is that? Another one of my favorite things about the interior are these like sport, sport seats here. Very cool. They really, they really hold you in, and they're like a single piece in the back with the headrest. Looks super cool. A lot of people lament about the fact that the material quality isn't where it needs to be for for Mercedes Benz. There's a lot of hard touch plastics in here, but you got to keep in mind that this car was designed for a particular price point. Yes, it's a Mercedes Benz, but yes, it also started underneath thirty thousand dollars. So. For looking at this as a $30,000 interior, I think it actually holds up really well. The touch points have all have a very high quality feel, so you don't have to worry about hard touch plastics in areas that you're never really touching. 
I've talked about briefly how it's revolutionary and future facing and how it was uh, kind of the debut of a new design language for Mercedes Benz. But, uh, I think it's, it's, it's really, really cool. You have all these creases on the side that kind of lead to a very swoopy profile. You have this coupe like roof line, which does limit headroom in the back, but it makes the car just look so cool. And with this AMG appearance package and this bright red paint, this car just looks so slick. Like it's just such a good looking car. Um, and I think it punches way above its weight when it comes to styling. Doesn't really have that much fake black plastic anywhere like some newer cars do. And I think it just looks, it looks sick, man. Like if you were to see this car rolling down the street all red, you'd be like, damn, that's one good looking car. And if people say, damn, that's one good looking car, that's how you know the exterior styling is, uh, it's a hit. So what kind of powertrain options that this car have. In Europe, you got a whole bunch of a variety of engines. You got a series of two liter four cylinder engines and smaller little four cylinder turbocharged engines that came in both uh, gasoline or petrol and diesel variants. You even got some variants with a manual transmission. So the two powertrain options that you got in North America were a turbocharged two liter four cylinder and a turbocharged two liter four cylinder. Yeah, yeah, let me explain. The first two liter turbo four was kind of what you found in the more mainstream models, which is what this car has, the more pedestrian friendly models. So that one had 220 horsepower, 258 uh, you know, pound feet of torque to a seven speed DCT, paired to either front wheel drive only or an all wheel drive formatic system. So that's what this has, the four the formatic. Um, the other two liter four cylinder, the, the spicy one, that's what you found in the AMG. So that was also a, a turbocharged four, but that had 355 horsepower and 332 foot pounds of torque. Uh, that was also through a seven speed DCT programmed a little bit differently. So that whole car is like completely different. I haven't driven that one. So that's like a whole different story, that AMG. Um, but people have like rave reviews about that car that first generation CLA 45 AMG. All right, now let's do some driving impressions. Turn the car on here. It has that classic Mercedes stock style shifter, which I'll admittedly admit that I'm not a fan of, but just a minor nitpick. All right, so in terms of the way that this car drives, considering that it's on a front wheel drive platform, um, I think it drives phenomenally. Um, a lot of the early reviews I remember that came out for this car criticized the driving dynamics for a luxury car, um, saying that they didn't really match the driving dynamics of a traditional rear wheel drive car like a 3 Series or a C-Class. The thing is, this car shouldn't really be compared against a 3 Series or a C-Class. If you look at the competitive set of this car, like a front wheel drive based, um, four, turbo four cylinder car with horsepower somewhere in the low 200s, things like the GTI, the Hyundai Veloster N, even the Honda Civic Si, all of those cars start in the high 20,000s or even low 30,000s. So this definitely competes with them even when brand new or competed with them when brand new. And against those cars, I think this handles really well. Like it's a, it's a fun front wheel drive sport compact car. It handles well around corners. With the formatic system, it's great in the winter. Um, the ride isn't too too harsh or rough or bumpy over um, uneven roads. And the main thing is, you just have like this sense of satisfaction from driving it. Like it's just, it's fun. It's it's like small and compact. It's fun to toss around. So I think the handling is is definitely a strong point of this car if you compare it against the right competition. So that entry level thing that we talked about was actually quite successful for Mercedes. This was one of Mercedes best selling models um, in the US and in Canada. And it was so successful that they actually launched a bunch of other cars based on this, this platform. So this car is now in its second generation and they've kind of repositioned the CLA a little bit. So they've replaced kind of the entry level trims of the CLA with the A-Class sedan. Same platform, a little bit more traditional sedan styling. I think the new one looks phenomenal. I love the new Mercedes-Benz styling. Looks cool, front and back. I like the look of this short little stubby sedan that they've designed in terms of this A-Class sedan. 
It looks fantastic. They've also now repositioned the CLA to be more of a high-end trim. It almost fills a gap between the A-Class sedan and the C-Class sedan. It's quite similar to a C-Class now. And again, I think the CLA, the new CLA looks phenomenal. Like this new Mercedes-Benz styling where it's like slanted forward the front of the car. It just looks so aggressive. I think it looks really slick and they've really nailed it with this new CLA. Building off this platform, they launched the GLA SUV, the new GLB SUV, um, and those two SUVs have also been a huge hit. So this whole approach that Mercedes-Benz had of creating like this entry-level front-wheel drive based family has really paid off and the CLA was kind of the forerunner for them to go into that segment. How does this car compare as a used car in 2020? If we're looking in particular at the, the early part of these of these CLAs. So in the used market in Canada, which is where I'm located, uh, a 2014-2013 CLA with decent mileage will run you about maybe 17, 18,000. A little bit less, a little bit more depending on the condition and the mileage. Now I think for that price point, it may be a little a little overpriced in the used market because for the same price point you can get yourself into a 3 series which gives you that rear wheel drive architecture a bigger um, a bigger car uh, a car that's designed to be at a higher price point starting off so in the used market if you were prioritizing this sporty look and the you know the interior and exterior styling of a Mercedes Benz then definitely go for a CLA uh, you'll still get a car that has great fuel efficiency, cool designs inside and out, a refined powertrain that's still competitive in 2020, um, interior technology that's still competitive in 2020. Um, so if, if that's what you're looking for, by all means go for the CLA. If you want slightly superior driving dynamics, a little bit more refinement, then maybe go for the 3 Series. It's really a choice set that needs to be made. So that'd be my my take on the used car market for this for this car. Uh, in terms of new cars, I think the A-Class sedan is one of the best values in the luxury market right now. It starts in the mid-30s in Canada, um, fully loaded with all the options that you'd want. You're probably in like the high 40s um, before you get into the AMG models. And, and that is, that's stellar value because C-Classes and 3 Series, all of those have now their price points are closer to 45, 50K in Canada. So getting yourself into an A-Class sedan, which by the way, has the same mechanicals as the new CLA, great value. I think the new CLA, it's the same thing really as the A-Class sedan with like a sportier body. And they charge a little bit of a premium for that. So if you value the, the sporty body, the sporty looks, then that premium's worth it. For me, I think I'd go with the, with the A-Class sedan, get all of those powertrain goodies, all that refinement, and save a little bit on the cost. So overall, is it a good buy? I think, yeah, like if it, if it meets what you're looking for in the used car market from a styling perspective, definitely a good buy. And I think in the new car market, the A-Class sedan is a fantastic buy, fantastic buy. And the CLA is also a good buy, again, with that sportier styling. So overall, good buy. Not good buy, not good buy, but like it's a good purchase. Forward and why that's such an important segment. Uh, something like that. Redo. Why is it so important for Mercedes Benz? Uh